Welcome back to 20 Clinical Pearls in 20 Days, where today we're going to attempt to blast through what I think is one of the most underappreciated markers, which should be on the standard blood chemistry, GGT, optimal reference range, what causes it to be abnormal, and what we can do about it from an evidence-based perspective. Now, historically, GGT was a marker of either alcohol consumption or liver dysfunction, but today, dozens upon dozens of papers all suggest that when GGT is elevated, it is a phenomenal marker of all things metabolic and or redox, and that's because when it's elevated, it might be pointing to a low antioxidant defense and or increased oxidative stress. That's why I think we should approach GGT as an integrated redox and metabolic stress marker. This particular paper here is one of many papers looking at large cohort studies and suggests that when women have a GGT above anywhere between like 16 to 20 and men anywhere between about 25 to 30, depending on the paper, that it might be looking at some sort of metabolic or redox issue going on. It has an intra-individual coefficient of variance of only 8%, which means it fluctuates a little bit, but not too much that we need to be worried about. Therefore, it's a relatively stable marker. I'll talk more about its variance tomorrow. When it's elevated above those levels, it is associated with, again, anything that's related to metabolic dysfunction and or redox imbalances. And you can look at this list of chronic diseases, GGT according to many papers, is associated with an increased risk of a number of these different things. Here's a paper that I thought summarized it really well. They said that GGT is a long-sought biomarker of redox status in blood circulation. Beautifully said. In terms of causes, alcohol consumption clearly, but anything related to metabolic dysfunction, so glucose dysregulation, insulin resistance, adiposity, high BMI, triglyceride imbalances, too much uric acid, or something to do with oxidative stress. Again, uric acid, possibly environmental pollutant exposure, uh, hepatic glutathione need, etc. Now, how do you fix it? Well, you have to go after what might be causing it in the first place, but we do have some ideas that increased fruit consumption is associated with lower levels. We might be able to use N-acetylcysteine. This is a meta-analysis done with N-acetylcysteine that did not look at GGT, but called N-acetylcysteine a powerful agent in the reinforcement of antioxidant profile and suggested that 1,800 milligrams a day in divided doses for at least four weeks was the most consistent in improving glutathione levels as well as increasing total antioxidant capacity. In this text, they posted a paper of only six diabetics using 1,800 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine for 12 weeks and found that it decreased GGT on an average about five, which isn't great, but it's something. And here's a paper on ubiquinol that used 150 milligrams of CoQ10 a day for 14 days and found that it probably be due to its antioxidant capacity lowered GGT only about three points. But that was quick. We have over 200 hours of similar information that we teach at Metabolic Fitness Pro. You can learn more about that and our advanced mentorship program that we just dropped by heading over there. We'd love to see you. And as always, God bless.